So, I want to explain to you how liquid crystal displays, LCD screens work, and I'm going to use some wool, two jars of pasta, a bottle of water, a hairdryer, and some stair gates, or things that look like them, along the way. Liquid crystal displays have in, the, have in them, as the name suggests, these things called liquid crystals. So what's a liquid crystal? Well, to answer that, well, let's consider states of matter. So normally you think that there's three states of matter. That's what you mainly teach at school. You've got liquids, yeah, like so, that take up the shape of the vessel they're in. You've got gases, and if you heat that up, that will turn to a gas, steam. And you've got solids. You cool them down. Uh, you cool that down, you get ice, which is a solid. So that's the three states of matter that we often learn about. But there's loads more states of matter. Um, there's, there's many more. There's plasma, there's Bose-Einstein condensates, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to worry about a, a state of matter called liquid crystals. Now what they are is they sit between liquids and solids. So I've got some in here. This is a liquid crystal. You can pour it like it's a well, like a fluid, because it is a fluid. But the molecules in there have some order like in a solid. And that's where my pasta comes in. So we can imagine this pasta here then is like uh, a liquid crystal. And because liquid crystal molecules are almost always long and thin, sort of like this penne. And because they're long and thin, they naturally line up with each other. Can you see here? We've got this sort of lined up bits of pasta. That's because they're showing you, showing you that there's some order in this. It's sort of still fluid, if you like, but it's got some order like a solid. And you can take it to even more extreme with spaghetti. Spaghetti is even longer and thin and so it naturally packs together in even more ordered ways. But all the molecules can still flow around, the, around them, around each other, like in a fluid. So, liquid crystals are, uh, are sit, as I said, between liquids and solids. They have order like a solid, but they can flow like a liquid. And just like other states of matter, if you heat them up, you can change them from one state to another. In here, we've got some of the liquid crystal molecules. And if I heat it up, there we go. It's gone clear. And that's gone clear because I've heated it up and changed it from its liquid crystal state to its liquid state. So in its liquid crystal state, all those molecules are lined up with each other and it's opaque. In its liquid state, they are all jumbled around and not lined up with each other because they've got enough energy to whiz, ar whiz, whiz around each other and it's clear. Also in a liquid crystal display, uh, display we've got a couple of filters. And these filters, these are polarising filters, just like you get in some, some sunglasses. And the thing about a polarising filter, if you can see this, if you put them like that, you can see through them. Yeah? But if I turn one 90 degrees, it goes black. Clear, black. Yeah? Clear, black. Right, what's going on there? That's where my stair gates and my string comes in. And I'm going to need some volunteers for this. You're going to have to come out from behind the camera, Rachel. The, the string then represents my beam of light, and that's going to go through the filters like this. There we go. And light then has sort of two forms, if you like. It has a, a, a form that, a wave that will go up and down, and the up and down light, in this case, can get through the filter. And it also has a side to side form. And the side-to-side -side form can't get through the filter very well, and that's why the polarising filters cut out half the light. Now, if we turn the filter, by one of the filters, by 90 degrees, now the up and down light can't get through this filter, but it can get through that one, and the side-to-side -side one can get through my filter on this side, but not the other one. So now, when they're in this orientation, the polarising filters are dark. Right. The liquid crystal, then, what we do in a liquid crystal display is we put some liquid crystals in between. And what that does is it takes the up and down light, so can we have an up and down wave? Yeah. And it twists it and lets it through the second filter, like so. Right. But it only does that in the liquid crystal form, not when it's in the liquid form. Thanks, guys.
So here we have the polarizing filters, and as you can see, they're or oriented so that we don't get any light through. Turn it that way, the light comes through again, that way dark again. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of the liquid crystal molecule, put it on the drop, a drop on this disc here, and sandwich it between that one. So now I've got it sandwiched between these discs. And now, when I put it in between the two, we end up, we can see where the liquid crystal is. We get this beautiful pattern emerging, and that's letting the light through from underneath because the liquid crystal has twisted the light and let it through the second filter. And then if I heat it up, hoping it as you melt it and turn it back to a liquid, it goes dark again. And then it cools down, turns back to a liquid crystal, and we get the light coming through once more. And it's exactly that sort of principle that's going on in your liquid crystal displays. This molecule that I've got in here, this is called 5CB, and it was invented here at the University of Hull in this very building by Professor George Gray, and it made all our liquid crystal displays possible.